Good evening everyone, here's our latest video update on Typhoon Utor or Bagyong La, uh, Labuyo. Our video update probably before it makes landfall system looks like it is undergoing another round of intensification here as it moves just east of Luzon. You can see a pinhole eye has now emerged and has now appeared here. System was last located approximately 230 kilometers east southeast of the town of Kasiguran here in the province of Aurora or about 350 kilometers east northeast from Manila. Maximum sustained winds according to JMA are now at 165 kilometers per hour with gusts of up to 240 kilometers per hour. Meanwhile, the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, which uses one minute sustained winds, have slightly higher wind estimates of about 215 to 260 kilometers per hour. So that makes Utor a category 4 typhoon in the Saphir Simpson scale. So, again, a very strong typhoon. And uh, as we've mentioned in our updates, and of if you've watched our live video update with the uh, Western Pacific Weather Team earlier this morning, we did say we won't be surprised if this system does indeed intensify into a category 4. And here we are, those warm waters out here in the Philippine, Philippine Sea, combined with good poleward outflow. A radial outflow we could say uh, actually and also again those light winds here in the region helping the system to gain strength just before it plows into Luzon. I uh, can also see the movement here now west-northwesterly at 20 kilometers per hour again on that track perhaps making landfall out here in the border of Aurora in the Sabela provinces early tomorrow morning Monday. Now looking at the latest infrared image, you can see again that eye now much, much clearer on the infrared than it did earlier this morning. Surrounded by deep and strong convective activity, cold cloud tops, negative 80 degrees Celsius or even colder. Again looking at a very uniform central dense overcast here. Radi radial outflow as well, pretty good. Um, and you can also see here in the infrared that much of the rain clouds and convection associated with the system now impacting major parts of Luzon and even those uh, southwesterly inflow uh, bringing some light to, uh, to moderate scattered uh, rains across parts of central and eastern Visayas, uh, parts of Cebu and even into Samar Island. Um, but most, mo more importantly here is the uh, system is now moving parallel to the coast of Luzon and again moving much nearer to the east coast of the provinces of say Aurora, Quezon, um, Isabela, Cagayan. Those, uh, those provinces are definitely under the gun in terms of heavy rains and strong winds and in looking at the latest radar image. Uh, finally, we have a, a, a radar image from Baler Aurora, which has unfortunately been offline for, uh, for quite some time now. And uh, Pagasa putting out their uh, latest image here from that radar site. Again, Baler is located just southwest of Casiguran. Casiguran is over here. Baler uh, Aurora is uh, located over here. And you can see here, this is about a two hour old image. And you can see it is beginning to pick up the eye of Utor. You can also see those outer and inner rain bands uh, suggested by light to moderate and even pockets of heavy rainfall in that region. Now, uh, moving farther south, uh, this is the radar in Subic. And you can also see now uh, bands of light to moderate and even pockets of heavy rain associated with the system now moving from the northeast to the southwest again. We got that cyclonic circulation around the storm, so expect those bands to move in. Uh, continue moving in tonight and into tomorrow. Man Metro Manila is situated over here, so we're probably seeing some light to moderate rains there as well. Again, it will continue to worsen as we move into the overnight hours. Finally, we have the radar image up to the north. This is in Apari in the province of Cagayan and you can also see even northern Luzon not being spared by this typhoon already seeing uh, bands of light to moderate rains push across into the provinces of Cagayan, Kalinga, Payao, Abra maybe even into Ilocos Norte and Ilocos Sur see some light to moderate rain showers as well and we can also see here inner rain bands now beginning to push in into the provinces of Isabela and Aurora definitely the provinces which could be in the landfall, so landfall zone uh, tonight and early tomorrow morning. 
Now in terms of the forecast track from the uh, earlier today you can see the computer models pretty good confidence now pretty good consensus on a track into the province of Aurora perhaps near the border of Isabela timing looks to be around 4 a.m. Uh, uh, Monday uh, Philippine time and then crossing across uh, the island of northern Luzon perhaps exiting by as early as say 5 p.m. Monday afternoon making landfall again a very strong category 4 won't be surprised if this would be upgraded to a super typhoon later on their uh, 12 Zulu update by the joint typhoon warning center but either way if you are watching right now and if you are still in this area please please um, heed the warnings and again uh, uh, continue to and uh, start preparing now if you haven't done so now obviously we do have uh, viewers from uh, Gua from from southern China Hong Kong and maybe wondering what would happen to this storm after it moves into Luzon well looking at the uh, analysis from the upper level wind flows you can see the subtropical ridge here it has slightly weakened and that is allowing uh, Utor to move on a west northwesterly course that weakening is being induced by this trough moving in across northern China right now and the extent of the weakening of this subtropical ridge will be the key as to when Utor will make that turn some models take it farther west into Hainan whereas some computer models take it as far east as Hong Kong but as you can see the consensus right now looks like just west of Hong Kong, definitely in the province of Guangdong, say by uh, Tuesday evening or Wednesday morning, depending on the speed of this system. And then we take a look at uh, the official forecasts, beginning with Pagasa. And again, you can see their track here, taking Utor or Labuyo, just north of Kasiguran. Remember, Kasiguran is over in this area, and the track takes it just north of Kasiguran which would be good news because uh, the strongest winds in a typhoon usually is on the northern or right front quadrant of the storm depending on the uh, relative to the motion uh, which which would uh, be in this case would be to the north of that circulation and uh, Japan Meteorological Agency some, uh, showing somewhat similar track with Pagasa tra 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 sorry, tracking uh, Utor uh, just north of Kasiguran as well, perhaps into the Aurora Isabella border. Same timing here, we're looking at about um, 4 to 5 a.m. Monday time maybe, and perhaps exiting the island of Luzon by about 3, 4, 5 p.m. afternoon on Monday. So that's tomorrow, so a very quick crossing here expected, but obviously it will induce massive weakening. Uh, before that though JMA expecting substantial intensification happening over the next um, 12 hours yeah, we still have about 12 hours before the system plows into land so expect another round of intensification to happen tonight again I won't be surprised if this becomes a super typhoon before landfall finally we have the joint typhoon warning center and their track is slightly further south taking Utor actually right smack into Kasiguran same timing here looking at early Monday morning as a potentially category 4 typhoon uh, just below super typhoon status being shown here by the joint typhoon warning center 120 knots so about 220 225 kilometers per hour sustained with gusts of up to 280 kilometers per hour so very strong damaging winds here Weakening though substantially to a category 2 once it exits the island of Luzon tomorrow afternoon and could regain some intensity perhaps back to a category high end category 2 maybe even category 3 we don't know uh, and then tracking it towards the province of Guangdong again west of Hong Kong probably west of Macau as well Macau is right over here so a uh, timing for that landfall here in southern China we're looking at about Wednesday morning Wednesday afternoon that depends on the extent and the strength of the subtropical ridge and also how far west does this system actually go now before we go just want to focus on uh, the landfall tomorrow or actually tonight um, tomorrow morning Monday morning we're expecting that landfall here in northern Luzon we'll put up a simple map here on where we expect those strongest winds to occur again we're expecting the system to make landfall very near the town of Kasiguran here in Aurora by about 5 a.m. Monday morning with winds of 220 to 280 kilometers per hour so a high-end category 4 just below super typhoon status 
and we expect those winds to again batter the coast of Aurora and Isabella again we expect the strongest winds 180 kilometers or more more uh, uh, and and the winds again usually as we've been saying is it's it, the strongest winds are usually located right of the motion of the storm so it's moving west northwestward the right side of that would be over here north of this line and you can see we have those red uh, areas shaded uh, including parts of Santiago City again this is in Isabella maybe Iligan City you could see some very strong damaging winds as well Pro probably massive massive trees and even infrastructure um, gonna be uh, gonna be destroyed here now fortunately uh, there isn't really a lot of population here I mean we do have some cities over here but um, it's it's mostly mountainous areas again you have the Sierra Madre mountain range running alongside the east coast of Luzon and you know the mountainous areas here will definitely weaken the system substantially as it crosses expecting it to become a category 2 maybe even a category 1 typhoon as it exits into Luzon uh, into the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea but before that the whole system will be tracking along the provinces of Cordillera mountain provinces passing north of Baguio by tomorrow afternoon and exiting through the province of Ilocos Sur, passing just south of the city of Vigan. Those areas here in blue, those uh, could see some typhoon force winds, what 120 to 180 kilometers per hour, still strong and still damaging, but not as strong as uh, what uh, the coast of Aurora in Isabela will feel tonight and into tomorrow morning. Now those areas in yellow shading, those uh, central Luzon, Pangasinan, parts of northern Luzon, Ilocos Norte, Cagayan, those areas will see some strong winds, maybe damaging winds, but uh, overall about less than 120 kilometers, so about tropical storm strength or less. But uh, again, you can see the wind field. Uh, this is not official. This is uh, just based on the computer models that we've been using, but uh, hopefully it, uh, it becomes useful for many of you out there. Finally, we have our 24-hour rainfall forecast here. Again, showing uh, the, the track of the system tracking through northern Luzon. And you can see also the red shading. Those areas could see more than 200 millimeters over the next 24 hours. Again, we, we are already starting to see those outer and inner rain bands push across much of northern Luzon. Parts of central and southern Luzon, including Metro Manila, could also see rains 100 to maybe even 200 millimeters tonight. And into tomorrow, that could definitely bring some flooding and even some landslides out here in the Bicol region. Now, uh, farther to the south, parts of Mindoro, maybe even Batangas, parts of northern Samar, and uh, other islands out here in central and eastern Visayas. Could see some light to moderate rains tonight, again due to that southwesterly flow from the storm. But overall, not too significant uh, compared to northern Luzon. Probably see some 100 millimeters, maybe even less. But could, that could still see uh, that could still bring uh, some flooding, and maybe even some minor landslides in uh, the uh, landslide prone areas. But again, as we've been saying, more importantly though is the areas near the landfall, projected landfall path of uh, uh, of of Utor is that uh, those areas are the ones definitely under the biggest threat not only in terms of heavy rains but also of the strong damaging winds accompanied with this system and before we leave i just want to say many thanks to all people who who are um who are staying uh, with the video and um good news is that we have created a facebook page so please click the link below in the video description hit the like button and you get the latest updates and forecast images that we usually use in our blog and also at westernpacificweather.com. But uh, again, uh, before we go, we take a look at the last visible satellite imagery of this storm just before it plows into land. Tomorrow morning, we expect the eye of the storm to be making its landfall in the province of Aurora near, uh, near the town of Casiguran again. Please stay safe, guys, and again, always see the warnings of the local officials, Pagas, and always monitor the progress of this storm through your local news stations. And also use our blog as well. But, uh, but remember, this is not official, but uh, we do hope that the information we put out here is useful enough for you guys. Stay safe, have a good night, hopefully see you tomorrow.